Today I am going to talk about DCC speed matching for your scale model locomotives. If you run multiple locomotives together in a consist, it is very important that they all run together at the same speed, so that the locomotives are not pulling or pushing on each other, causing jerks or potential damage to the drivetrain. Because the manufacturers can't agree on a standardized motor speed and gear ratio combination, one locomotive you have may run a lot faster or slower than another locomotive from a different manufacturer. For example, my Bowser SD40-2F is one of the slowest locomotives I have, which tops out at around 56 scale miles per hour, while my Rapido Dash A on the other hand is much faster at 84 scale miles per hour. If you try to run the Bowser and Rapido together without making any adjustments, you will have disastrous results because the faster locomotive will be dragging the slower locomotive and spinning its wheels on the track, which generates undesirable grinding sounds and is also very bad for the models. What I'm doing is to get all my locomotives to run at the same speed, using a process known as speed matching. Speed matching used to be a lot more difficult under DC controls because it involved remotoring or regearing the entire locomotive. With DCC it is a lot easier to speed match because you can just change the decoder settings as opposed to physically changing the drive mechanism. For this, you will need a DCC system with CV programming capability. I am using my Digitrack Zephyr Extra in conjunction with the JMRI software. You will also need a way to measure the locomotive speed. You can time how long it takes for the locomotive to pass a section of track and then manually calculate its speed. Or you can buy one of these AccuTrack 2 speedometers. This thing is battery powered and it uses two infrared lights to calculate how fast a locomotive is going in terms of scale speed. It works for both HO and N scales with units defined in miles or kilometers per hour. I am going to set the top speed of all my locomotives at 50 scale miles per hour because I personally think 50 is a nice whole number and it is quite fast for models. You can set a different top speed if you so desire. I know that some people like running their trains at very fast speeds, and some other people like them nice and slow. Since our DCC system and DCC decoder does not talk in terms of scale speed, I am going to draw up a chart to help you visualize better. The JMRI throttle which I am using with my Digitrack system goes from 0 to 100, with 0 being stopped and 100 being the maximum speed. The decoders in the locomotive use speed steps, which usually goes from 0 to 128. And lastly, the speed table inside each decoder have 28 indices. It is a good idea to make a conversion chart between scale speed, throttle position, speed steps, and speed table indices so that you can quickly refer to it when doing speed matching. I will make this chart available for download. Note that all the values are rounded to the nearest whole number on the chart. The first method I'm going to show you is the simple method. This method uses three configuration values, or CVs, to define the speed of the locomotive. The three points are called the start voltage, which is CV2, medium voltage, which is CV6, and max voltage, which is CV5. All decoders that are manufactured to NMRA standards will have CV2, CV6, and CV5 matching the start, medium, and max voltages. I have this Rapido F40 here that I'm just going to run with its default settings. I'm going to set the throttle to 100% and see how fast the locomotive runs. It runs at 64 scale miles per hour. I'm going to enter this number into the spreadsheet I made, which will tell me approximately how much to reduce the CV5 max voltage by in order to reach a top speed of 50 scale miles per hour. I will make this chart available for download as well. The spreadsheet tells me that I need to reduce CV5 from the default value of 255 down to 199. All I have to do then is to go into my operations mode programmer, also known as programming on main on some other DCC systems, select the locomotive I want to program which is via 6454, and then write a value of 199 into CV5.
As I push the throttle to 100% again, the locomotive now tops out at 50 scale miles per hour. If it does not run the speed that you want it to go, just increase or decrease the value of CV5 in small increments until the top speed matches what you desire. After you have calibrated CV5, you can set the value of CV6 to about half the value of CV5. And when I set the throttle to 50%, the F40 moves at 25 scale miles per hour. If there's any discrepancies with regards to the value of CV5, you can increase or decrease its value to match the speed that you desire. Finally, set CV2 to the lowest value that will get the locomotive moving when you set the throttle to 1%. On most ESU decoder equipped locomotive with the back EMF enabled, this value is 2 or 3. On other decoder brands, this value may be different. Test the locomotive at various throttle positions and check that the speed matches the throttle position. For example, at 90% throttle, the locomotive should run at 45 scale miles per hour. At 80%, it should run at 40 scale miles per hour. At 70%, it should run at around 35. 60% makes it run at 30, so on and so forth. 40% corresponds to 20 scale miles per hour. 30% corresponds to 15, 20% corresponds to 10, and 10% corresponds to 5. The speed calibration does not have to be perfect on a dot. I generally find that a 1 scale mile difference to be perfectly acceptable, and it won't cause operational problems. Now the above method, the simple method which involves adjusting CV2, CV6, and CV5, only works for models with motors that respond to voltage changes in a straight line. Let me show you what I mean with a graph. Some manufacturers such as Rapido, Scale Trains, and Walthers use a motor that runs at speeds in perfect correlation with the amount of voltage applied to the motor. That means the locomotive will increase its speed at an even and steady pace as the voltage increases. These brands can use the simple speed matching method because their performance properties can be easily defined using just three points, which are CV2, CV6, and CV5. Some other locomotive brands can't be speed matched using the simple method because the motors in them don't respond in a straight line as the voltage increases. For example, Bowser and Inner Mountain's motors respond to voltage changes in an exponential curve. At low speeds, the motor responds to voltage increases very gradually, and then at some point, the motor will gradually speed up more and more to the voltage increase. Backman's motors, on the other hand, respond in a logarithmic curve, which means the motor will speed up very fast at first, and gradually change its speed less and less as the voltage increases. For the motors that don't respond in a straight line, we will use the speed table method, which is slightly more complex than the simple method. Instead of using three points to define the performance of the motor, a speed table will define the performance of the motor using 28 points. This way the motor can be fine-tuned at different areas of the speed curve in order to compensate for the erratic changes in speed. I am going to use this Bowser SD40-2F as an example. First I am going to adjust the speed of the locomotive using just CV2, CV6, and CV5. You can see that the locomotive does run at 50 scale miles per hour at 100% throttle. But as I dial the throttle down, the speed of the locomotive falls way below than what it should be. At 50% throttle, it only runs at 20 scale miles per hour. So I am going to switch to the speed table tab in JMRI and start by checking the speed calibration. At 90 and 80% throttle, the speed is fine. However, as I get to 70%, the speed of the locomotive is 33 scale miles per hour, which is slightly slower than where I want it to be, which is 35 scale miles per hour. I am checking the corresponding speed index, which is around index 20, and I am going to gradually increase index 20, 21, and 19 
until I hit 35 square miles an hour. It is a good idea to change three indices at once, because the position of the nearby indices will also affect the changes in speed. When I have the correct speed for 70%, I am going to leave index 20 as is, and then also adjust index 21, 22, and 19 slightly, so that the line they form is more or less straight. Moving on to 60%, the locomotive only moves at 26 instead of 30 scale miles per hour. So I am going to increase the corresponding indices, which is 16, 17, and 18, until it hits 30 miles per hour. The good thing about programming on the main is that you can write these speed indices while the locomotive is still moving and get immediate feedback about the changes in speed that you just made. I do the same test to the locomotive for the rest of the throttle positions and adjust the speed indices three at a time until the speed of the locomotive is half of the indicated throttle percentage every single time. The final speed table for the Bowser looks something like this. You can tell that the speed curve is steep in the beginning to compensate for the slow motor at first, and then it gradually levels off as the motor becomes faster later on. Compare this to the speed table of the Rapido F40, which is literally a straight line. You can do this for every single locomotive you have, so that they all run at the same speed, or you can also just do it for the locomotives that you plan on running together. It is important to note that the speed calibration will be different for every single locomotive and decoder combination, so it is okay if the speed curve from one locomotive looks slightly different to the next. Sometimes even if you have two identical locomotives with identical decoders, the calibration will still be slightly different because of the slight variances in motor performance. That's pretty much all I have to talk about in regards to DCC speed matching. I will end the video with a run-by with a consist of a few of my locomotives that have been speed matched. Thanks for watching.